So before you go shopping online or talk to any salesperson about what coffee machine you're going to buy, please watch this entire video because I'm gonna go through all the things that those salespeople won't tell you about what's important for your coffee machine. And they might be super important to you making the best type of coffee for you at home. These are the things that I've talked to my customers over this last year and listening to your comments and feedback from you guys about what's important to you. So I'm gonna go through the most important things that you need to know before buying a coffee machine because it is a big investment and I don't want you to make any mistakes. So let's check it out. G'day YouTube, Ride here, your coffee coach and international ambassador, brew guide, counselor, confidant, etc. all of those things. And I'm here for your questions. So if there's something I don't cover in this video, pop them in the comment section below and let me know. I'll try to respond where I can. But there are literally thousands of machines now out there and hundreds more coming onto the market each year. So where do you even begin? Well, I'm gonna start with the two most important factors and they don't even relate to your coffee machine. This is before you even start thinking about what coffee machine you're going to buy. Let's get into the first one, which is your coffee beans. So I think coffee beans are the most important factor in making a great coffee. When I think of great coffee, it might be different to what you think is a great coffee. So that's really important too, is to understand what your palate is. Like when I'm thinking about coffee and the more modern drinkers of coffee will want that sweeter, smoother, more nuanced flavors coffee. Often you'll be drinking it black, maybe adding a dash of milk. But even if you're drinking it as a latte and a cappuccino, that smooth, really sweet, beautiful tasting coffee is what a lot of coffee drinkers want now. And that's what we refer to as specialty coffee. It's usually Arabica, although there is a species called Robusta which can do some quite nice specialty. However, specialty isn't just a buzzword. Specialty is an actual category, a band of quality of the highest type. So these are beans that have no imperfections, no defects, and they really do taste lovely and smooth. However, if you're an older drinker, or maybe you're a smoker, and you've been drinking coffee for since when it was back when it was just instant available, you might not enjoy, for you, the coffee that tastes great might be that intense bitter kick that really tastes like that coffee. And that's okay because that's what your preference is. Coffee is so subjective. Its beauty is literally in the taste buds of the beholder. So everyone is unique in what they want out of a coffee. There's no real right or wrong. And if that's what you want, if you want that swift, intense kick, that punch to get you going in the morning, then look at something maybe like a dark roast. Robusta is a classic one because Robusta is a species of coffee that is literally robust. Robust in flavor and Robusta is a tree. And it delivers a really intense, double the amount of caffeine, a kick that will get you started. If you've been drinking coffee since like the 1950s or so, then you probably enjoy that type of coffee. So that's really important that you go and find a local roaster or somewhere that delivers the type of coffee beans that you want. All right, so the next most important thing before we even get into the coffees, and this really angers me when I speak to customers that come in after they've bought their brand new coffee machine and spent thousands on it, and they come in, they ask for a kilo of our coffee blend ground for home espresso. You can guess what it is, it's a grinder. Now, a lot of salespeople don't care, don't really know or really understand, why a grinder is so important. And unless they're trying to sell you the one that's all in one, that's got a grinder built in, which has its own set of problems I'll get into later, then they usually don't even suggest that you need to buy a grinder and they're just focused on the sexy looking coffee machine. So you as a consumer, you don't know and you're relying on these guys to give you their expertise. They don't really have any expertise because I'm telling you right now, you can make a fantastic coffee on a really great grinder with really great beans and the worst machine that you've ever met. That will get you a much better result than the other way around. Having bad beans, bad grinder, and a fantastic machine will not get you the same result. So a grinder is just one of the most important things to do. So really, if you can, set aside a small budget just for your grinder. It doesn't have to be a lot, but if you're spending thousands on a coffee machine, then just invest maybe a thousand dollars into a grinder. For some of you, that might be massively over budget and you can't fathom spending that much money on a grinder, let alone a machine. Now let's say you don't have a budget, but you really, really, really wanna get the best coffee that money can buy. Well, there are ways if you're willing to put in a bit of manual labor and finessing. There are ones like the Breville Smart Grinder Pro, the Barazza Encore, there's the new Fellow Opus. They are great entry-level grinders. They're conical burrs, and they really do deliver a good coffee 
at that low entry level of about 150 US dollars, they're not a lot. So even if you've only got a small budget, you should be able to find a couple of hundred dollars just to do your grinder. If that really you can't do that, then make sure you buy your coffee beans ground in the smallest quantities possible so that it's fresh because the moment the coffee bean is ground, it evaporates all of those lovely, delicious tasting oils into the atmosphere. It goes inert about a thousand times faster than a whole coffee bean does. So you really wanna keep that as fresh and grinding as fresh as you can as you go, just enough to make your daily coffee and not really a lot more. Now you can always opt for secondhand grinders as well because they do tend to last. There's not the same problems that you have with coffee machines with the water and the heat moisture built up inside there. So a grinder's job just to grind coffee. The motors usually last a very long time, even the cheap appliances ones. So just find one of those. Don't go for the super cheap Kmart ones because they don't grind fine enough. Unless you're making coffee in a plunger or a cold brew or maybe some of the filter ones, they don't require as specific size grind as say espresso however if you're doing espresso then really just invest in one of those three the Barossa the Breville or the Fellow they will get you started and I will be doing a video series on what coffee grinder to buy so that'll come out in the next couple of months so hopefully you'll see that and then you can help you decide on what coffee grinder to buy just talk to someone or drop a comment in below ask me what grinders I'm happy to answer where I can so now that we've established the two most important factors in making your coffee at home taste that much better, you can buy something like this Wakako Pico Presso, which is honestly one of the best portable brewers. It fits away in this beautiful tiny little carry case so it doesn't take up much room and you can really make top quality espresso. Yes, it doesn't do milk, but if you're drinking black coffees, that's not an issue anyway. And milk is so easy as well. Like you can literally get a cup of milk, pop it in the microwave and you heated your milk. You want to get some texture in it, like a latte. Then you can buy those fantastic little nano foamers and they steam the milk. If you don't want to, you can buy a $5 plunger and just froth the milk when it's hot. It'll come up really nice and silky. And then you can pour some latte out and do some other things with it as well. So milk isn't essential when you're talking manual portable espresso machine. It's just one of the things that I really believe can get you an exquisite coffee at a really low price. Like these will cost you about $100 US and maybe even less. They are fantastic and they deliver a full double shot of coffee so easily. Maybe a little bit of fussing and, and getting rid of the coffee might be a little bit tricky. However, I swear by it. I really do believe in it. And I think if you want to get a great coffee and you don't have a lot of money, this is the way to go. There are bigger ones like Lair makes some amazing home brewers and some of them come with their carry case as well. They're like a lever machine. So you get full control over the extraction, the flow, the pressure, and you can really go down in some of the specialty crazy coffee techniques that you might see on TikTok and on YouTube. They are brilliant and I swear by the Flare 58. In fact, if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's fantastic. You've also got to consider budget because this is quite honestly one of the big things that everyone needs to consider. I know some of you will say, I don't have a budget, but everyone does have a budget, what they value spending on their home espresso equipment. For me, I don't have a budget. I love buying up things, but if you're just getting into coffee for the first time, like you've been doing takeaway coffees and maybe you're spending about $10 a day on your household coffees, that might be you and your partner or your flatmate or whatever, just add that up over a year and you're already looking at $3,600. So you could spend half of that get a fantastic coffee machine and a grinder and still save money in the first year, you'll make more than your money back. But there on in, you'll be making the best coffees at home and you'll never want to go out again and get takeaway coffee anymore. Consider this, when you go to the cafe, you're looking at a minimum $5,000 machine, $30,000 machine, another five to $10,000 for grinders. So a little appliance brand is never going to be able to create the same level of quality at your home than the commercial machines can. However, the technology in the world has come so far now all those commercial equipment and that technology has trickled down into the consumer market and now you can get some really fantastic commercial grade machines for a fraction of the price but it's still not going to be $200 I'm afraid to say those appliance ones they have cut corners they've made them with cheap plastic parts and while they might make you a coffee really nice today in a couple of years time they break down and it's not worth replacing them because it costs more to replace them than it does to buy a new one whereas if you spend a bit more above that thousand dollar range and I'm talking Australian so it might be a little bit under a thousand dollars in the US dollars then those are serviceable and they can last you 20 plus years or until you want to upgrade it so they're a lot better idea however 
over, we'll get into the budgeting of the smaller machines in a little bit, but I just wanted you to understand how to budget for your coffee machine relative to how much you spend currently on coffee. If you're just drinking instant coffee at home now, I'm not gonna say to you, go out there and buy a $5,000 machine. It's not the value for you. You could get away with an appliance machine because you know whether you're drinking pods or instant, the coffee is going to be better definitely than those two options and you won't blow your budget. So on the topic of convenience, there is also time to heat. And that's an important thing for a lot of you. And I know a lot of you will have seen advertised out there, this machine heats up in three seconds. This machine takes 30 seconds and it's ready to go. And that might sound very appealing to you. However, there's one thing that you have to be aware of. The machine itself heating up is one thing. Yes, it might have the pressure ready to go and it might be ready with hot water to extract your coffee. However, if this, here, this is your porta filter. This is solid metal, and this takes a lot more time to heat up. And if this isn't piping hot, like if you can hold your finger on there for longer than a second, it's cold. And the energy that it takes to heat this up will mean it's taking away the energy to extract your coffee, and you end up with a weak, a sour, under-extracted coffee that doesn't taste very nice. So you really have to wait until this is hot. And this can take you 10 minutes to get that metal really hot. You can force it along by putting water into it, boiling water into it, or soaking the head in boiling water, and it helps speed up the process. But at the end of the day, until this is piping hot, it doesn't matter how fast your machine is because it will still create bad coffee. For those of you who have E61, and you might not understand what an E61 group head is, there's a couple of different type of machines and the way that they build them that make it more easy or less easy for you to make coffee. Oh, and guys, go and follow this other YouTube channel Aaron the coffee nerd he's doing fantastic videos super high quality productions he's a little channel and I'd like to give him a shout out because but well, when I was at 3000 I really wish that a bigger channel could have given me a shout out send some followers along to me because it benefits me the growth of the channel and as well for you guys it benefits you more information more people to watch and he's doing fantastic things out there so go over there subscribe to his channel watch his videos say hi from me because I want to support the industry. A lot of the times within coffee industry, we are also siloed and isolated. There's a lot of hush hush and secrets and we won't share with other people what we're doing. But I'm all about the community, bringing people together, bringing coffee to everyone so that it makes it more accessible. And so by giving you more information, whether you watch it on my channel or on his channel or on anyone else's channel, it's just better for the entire industry if we have more information. So go check them out and please support other video channels out there. And of course, hit the like button on this video and share it with a mate that you might think would get a lot out of it. It really helps my channel grow so I can make more of these videos that you hopefully enjoy. If you wanna do something with milk and you don't mind a bit of fussing around, the Bellman's, it's a cappuccino maker with the steamer built in, it goes on your stove top and it makes absolutely great coffee, but you do have a huge learning curve for it and it is a big effort. However, I swear by it, it makes fantastic coffee. A lot of people just use them at home as well and they can take them camping as well. And they're only about $200 US as well, so not that much more expensive. Then from there, there are the Atomic or the Little Guy, which are other stovetop steamers and espresso makers at the same time, but they start getting into the price range of about $1,000 and maybe $800 US. And at that point, I really believe the Gadgeta Classic Pro is a better option because it's just a super solid machine and actually a lot easier. So if you don't need it to be portable, the Gadgeta is much better. So if you don't have a budget at all, you can buy some of these really, really cheap appliance brands. The one that I recommend is the DeLonghi Stilosa. There's two versions and I picked mine up for $50 on Marketplace. And it's fantastic because it has a big stainless steel boiler that gives it enough pressure to be able to extract and you can pimp it like I did in this video here and you can get even better quality coffee out of it. And it literally costs you maximum like $100, even less in the US. And that will be perfect getting started if you're coming from pod machines or instant coffee. So check out the DeLonghi Stilosa. I think it's a really fantastic machine for its price. It won't cost you much. So even if it dies within a year or two, that's not too bad because you can always just go out and find another secondhand one. So now if you don't have a budget, if budget doesn't matter and you want the best of the best of the best, then the world is literally your oyster because there are machines out there and grinders out there which literally do it all. And 
some of them are just ridiculously. I did a video on the world's craziest coffee machines. You should check that out if you're super keen on them because there's one that looks like a V12 engine and you drink out of the exhaust pipes. It's ridiculous, but very expensive, very good machine and really interesting. It's going to start a lot of conversations if you have that on your bench in your home when you have a party. But also one of my favorite coffee machines is called the Decent Espresso and it comes with its own carry case that I take wherever I'm going. Hands down, it is the best machine for me. It can just dive right into that rabbit hole and literally, and it can replicate pretty much any other machine out there on the market. It looks like the Tesla of coffee machines with a big, big iPad display right in the front so you can measure all the variables like temperature, control, pressure, flow, weight, time, the whole gamut of variables that required to make the best espresso. And then you can package that up, save it down onto a disc, send it off over the other side of the world, and someone can put it into their decent espresso machine and get the same result. So that really is my favorite. And I take mine literally wherever I go. If I have powered sites, I'll take it camping. Just so you know, there are a lot of options out there if you don't have a cap on your budget. And finally, if you're on a really tight budget, but you just want to try and get the best out of your appliance machine and you don't have the budget to buy something super expensive, there are some ways to help improve the best coffee from what your machine's limitations are. And these are just accessories, like you can get a tamper. There's this thing called a puck screen, which goes on top of your puck into the porter filter and just sits there and helps evenly distribute the water out and just making for a better, more even extraction. You obviously, you can get the precision baskets. There's this dude called a WDT, which is a tool that helps distribute the coffee all around. So it gets rid of all those clumps, any pockets of airs or dense bit and just makes it much more even that whole extraction, which makes it balanced and sweeter rather than having parts of it which are a bit bitter and other parts which are sour. And so these things might cost you 50, 100 bucks or even less depending on where you buy them. So don't worry about if you can only afford a small appliance brand like the DeLonghi Stilosa. Over time, you can just slowly accumulate these tools. Maybe you can ask Santa to pop them in your Christmas stocking for you this Christmas, but they're really easy ways of improving your coffee. So as you get more experienced, you can just keep adding these in and these will last. If you buy them for your machine, these can be transferred to any machine as well. So when you upgrade your machine, these can stay with you and help you continue to improve your coffee. So they're all the main things to consider. Now, the smaller things that you might want to consider as well is the small appliance machines. They don't often have enough power, enough juice to really extract coffee well. So they do what we call an under extraction. And that's when you're not getting the full amount of oils out of your coffee, because to get proper coffee extraction, you need about nine bars of pressure, about nine times the Earth's atmosphere pressing down to squeeze all those lovely oils out. And some of these machines just cannot do it. Once you make the coffee too fine, it just cannot push through. So you have to make it quite coarse so the water can go through and then you get a weak, sour or a slightly under extracted flavor. If that is happening to you, this is really important. Choose coffee beans, which are a bit darker roasted or have chocolatey flavors and don't have the sort of fruity flavors because they will taste really sour when you put them through your machine. So yeah, aim for some chocolatey, heavy, full bodied, intense, those sort of flavors, they really help cut through. And even if they're slightly under extracted, they still work in milk drinks and they still taste that sort of coffiness that you're looking for. Now, obviously design aesthetic is important. I wanna make sure that you don't get fooled by some of the really nice looking machines out there that actually aren't really good. There's one that came out sell. It looks quite nice and you know, fancy and a bit retro, but it's rubbish. It will never give you a good extraction and you'll just be throwing money down the drain. So just avoid those ones. Some of the Smeg ones are really interesting because the Smeg brand side looked really lovely. I, I really like the design aesthetic that Smeg have on their coffee machine and their toaster range and they all sort of match and the grinder matches, but they're not good machines and they're expensive. And I don't understand why they make machines that are expensive and not good, but that's what they've decided to do. That might be changing. La Pavoni got bought by Smeg and La Pavoni are one of the oldest manufacturers of coffee machines dating right back to 1905. They make especially good espresso machines. And now that technology is going to be implemented into Smeg. And so I think in the future, Smeg will get better at making quality espresso machines. But right now, and the older ones, stay away from them. In other things in the design aesthetic, there's a lot of stainless steel, brushed aluminium, 
that chrome look and they are fantastic and if you want that sort of steampunk look that's fantastic for any sort of kitchen because these are going to sit front and center in most people's homes so you do want it to have a bit of aesthetic now if you have one of those chrome machines you can always get them custom made so they have a place here in australia called spec designs which customize your coffee machines with whatever sort of colors and materials you might like there are leather paddings around the side different colors to match your kitchen and there's some of them are beautiful some of the different timbers are beautiful you can get them on all different accents around the coffee machine really make your coffee machine super special and if you have the budget i would recommend doing that and even get your logo put on them it's fantastic so really don't worry too much if you're not that into the stainless steel chrome look because you can really customize them and now they're starting to bring out coffee machines in multiple colors as well san remo have one in multiple colors and also profitech the profitech go comes in multiple colors as well i think they look beautiful escaso as well have a huge range so you can really find something that matches your kitchen and that's something to consider. However, I would always focus on the reliability and the quality of the machine first. But even though your machine might not look the sexiest, don't forget that you can still go out there aftermarket and get it customized. Now, there's obviously loads more I can go on with what's important to you, what special features you might need. There's too much and too little time to do it. So if you have a question, pop it in the comment section below and I will try to get back to you. There's a lot more questions coming through now and I find it hard to keep up. But if there are super important ones that I see there, I will do my best to answer those questions. So if you have anything about specific features and functions, like what power consumption, what size footprint, there might be other things that you need to consider. But I didn't want to do an hour long video just for this. And I've got a lot more videos coming out in quick succession for the rest of the year. So stay tuned and you'll be able to see those videos and hopefully get a better understanding of what coffee machine to buy. So a quick recap of the most important things. The beans, a grinder, the budget that's relative to the amount that you currently spend on coffee now. What style of coffee do you enjoy? Do you like the bitter or do you like the sweeter, smoother flavors? Consider your own experience and whether you want to put effort into the daily ritual or whether you just want the convenience of a press button, go and set and forget. How long do you want it to last? Is it a quick fix for now and you might try to upgrade in the near future? Or is this something that you just want to hang on to with a couple of services for many many years until you decide to upgrade do you need a steam wand or do you just drink black coffee because that matters too is the look and feel super important to you and lastly accessories which ones to buy which ones are the most important and which ones can you afford right now to get you the best result today and which ones can you put off to the future to continue to improve over time so hopefully you found this video helpful i wish to continue to do many many more of these videos and thank you for watching this. I'm Ride, your coffee coach, and as always, enjoy your brew.